the mirror and say yes I can. Oh, by your friend, oh, by your friend. Don't tell me why, don't tell me why. Can't even go on and on. I can't even get enough. Don't tell me why, don't tell me why. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the virtual launch of the Africa Wiki Challenge 2024. I hope you're all excited to be here. <laughs> Let me see your reactions in the chats, in the chats and then in the main call too. If you're excited to be here, please show your reaction. Okay, I'm seeing some confetti, a heart, round of applause. <laughs> thank you. So thank you all for joining. Um, we have language interpretation available in French. So if you're not an English speaker, please make use of that platform. Thank you. We'll go right into our session for today and we'd we'll invite Jael Sewapoating for our opening remarks. Um, Jael, are you ready? Hello. Hi, everyone. Oh, I hope you can see me. Okay, so it seems there's a bit of a network challenge. Okay, Jael is in. Hi, Jael. Oh, apologies. Apparently, <laughs> apparently I was muted. So, yeah, I apologize for that. Okay, so I'm Jael, I'm team lead at Open Foundation West Africa, and it is my great pleasure to welcome you all to the launch of the Africa Wiki Challenge 2024. Over the past three years, our campaign has brought um, the vibrant and diverse narratives of our continent to the forefront through themes such as landmarks in Africa, which was in 2021, projecting Africa culture in 2022, and African free continental trade, which was in 2023. Each theme has been a step towards amplifying Africa's presence and stories on one of the world's most visited online platforms, Wikipedia. Let me not bore you with the statistics as I know very well that Eugene and the rest of the team will get into that um, later on. This year, we are proud to again align our theme with African Union Day's focus on education. That's Educate Africa, Nurturing Minds for the 21st Century. Under Agenda 2063 of African Union, there is a vision to create revitalized, high quality and unified educational systems that meet the needs of Africa this vision seeks to cultivate attitudes, values, knowledge, and skills that support our African continent and our participation in the global knowledge economy. The objective of this year's AWC is to highlight and recognize the diverse educational perspectives in Africa. We encourage you all to share information and expertise, contributing engaging and informative content to Wikipedia by doing so, we not only enrich the platform, but also ensure that the wealth of African knowledge 
innovation and educational, educational excellence is accessible to a global audience. We are honored to have you with us today and also our two esteemed speakers who embody the spirit of our theme. With us today, we have the general, the sec, sorry, the Secretary General of the Ghana Commission for UNESCO, and we also have a distinguished lecturer from the University of Mines and Technology. And these are speakers specially invited because they embody the spirit of the theme of education. Their insights and experiences will undoubtedly inspire us all as we embark on this year's journey. Additionally, we are excited to announce the prizes again for this year's winners. I believe that this will motivate you all to put in your best. The winner will receive 10,000 Ghana cities. The first runner-up will receive 6,000 Ghana cities. The third runner-up will receive 3,500 cities. And this year, we are not forgetting our amazing people that do not contribute in edits, but upload pictures on Wikimedia Commons. And so the best photo upload on Wikimedia Commons will also receive 4,000 cities. And to encourage our dear females, we are giving 4,000 cities to the top female contributor. As we embark on this exciting journey, I urge each of you to bring your unique experiences, insights, and voices to the table. Let us work together to document our stories, celebrate our achievements, and contribute to the global knowledge economy in a meaningful way. Thank you for joining us today, and I look forward to seeing the incredible contributions that will emerge from this year's challenge. Together, let's project African stories in education while we continue to educate Africa and nature minds for the 21st century. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Zael. So we're going right into the session for speakers and a bit of information. For those who joined earlier, you saw me share a video a lyric video of a song titled Just Do It by Six Strings in Dali. For those who don't understand Ghana or Ewe or any other Ghanaian language, the song basically means you can do it. Don't let anyone hold you back from whatever you put your mind to. A bit of encouragement for the contest and participants. So moving into our first speaker, Madam Amasewa Nikwe Tete. She's a dynamic leader in education and cultural preservation, serving as the Secretary General of UNESCO Ghana. She holds a Master's in Educational Leadership from the University of Ghana and a Bachelor's in International Relations from Ashasi University. She leads numerous initiatives to improve educational access and quality, including teacher training and tech integration. She's a key contributor to policies promoting gender equality and inclusive education and has strengthened ties with national organizations and NGOs to advance educational goals. She also champions the empowerment of women and girls through education, supporting STEM scholarships and mentorship programs. Being a frequent speaker at global conferences, Amasewa discusses educational reform and sustainable development. She has authored several articles on these subjects, offering innovative solutions to academic challenges. Her vision is accessible, high quality education for all African children, preparing them for the 21st century's challenges. She enjoys mentoring young leaders and engaging in community service, reflecting her commitment to personal and community good. Madam Amasewa, are you ready? I am. I was looking around to see who was being introduced in such a lovely way. Good afternoon to everyone. Bonjour a tous. I'm told there are some francophones here. Um, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, Open Foundation West Africa, where I proudly serve as a member of the board. I have been given up to 10 minutes. I, uh, a bit more if I wanted, but I think we can do this in 10. It's a pleasure this afternoon to be with you. 
Um, let me start uh, from where she left off in the profile to say that um, UNESCO is the UN body charged with overseeing all of SDG4, which as you may know, is about education, equal opportunities and access to quality education for all. And therefore, from a professional point of view, this is a very important initiative to me. It is also important to note, you may already know this, but this year, the African Union has declared the year as the year of education. You may be aware that there is the Continental Educational Strategy for Africa, which we call the CESA, that all African countries have signed to, obviously taking its roots from SDG4 and its indicators that we are all working towards. You are aware of the um, Africa We Want document that is also pushing African Union's work. And so here at the Ghana Commission for UNESCO, which is a, a government body that ensures that UNESCO's work happens unabated in Ghana, we are very excited that there is this African program. There are national commissions in all your countries. If you do not know about them, I encourage you to look for them and to look for their work so that you can link up with them. I'm aware that there is simultaneous interpretation, so I'm going to try and go a bit slower to give them the opportunity to hear me first and then interpret. I think the Africa Wiki Challenge is a brilliant idea. You will bear with me that a lot of young people who are increasingly using the digital space these days see very little of themselves online if they come from Africa. The music is foreign, the examples are foreign, the videos are foreign, and so unconsciously, we begin then, instead of preserving and protecting that which is ours, we begin to imbibe that which does not belong to us. Now, we have many options. We can throw our hands up in the air and blame other people, or we can see it for the problem that it is and begin to address it. And I believe that this is what organizations such as the Open Foundation West Africa is doing, and especially through its Africa Wiki Challenge. This year, I'm told the theme is Educate Africa, Nurturing Minds for the 21st Century. Such an apt theme. I am intrigued particularly by the use of the word nurture. Nature connotes a certain bringing up, feeding, but in a very loving and caring way. So you nurture if you will want the final product to be a good one. And so it is up to us to nurture the African minds that use the internet. And what better way to do this than to contribute articles about Africa onto Wikipedia and other spaces online. As you begin to think about how you may participate in this challenge, I'd like to urge you to ensure that the work that you put out there, again, we have a, a reputation to protect. We do not want African content to be poor. And so note that as you prepare to put articles the news information out there, ensure that it is of good quality, that it is well researched, is devoid of embellishment and bias, and that it tells the African story. We think the African story as it is, it's a good one. We need not add to it, nor take away from it. And we need to ensure that we represent our country fairly. This afternoon, I've been asked to Highlight education, the importance of preserving the African narrative in the digital space. The importance of preserving the African narrative in the digital space. 
And I believe in my introduction, I've already said one or two things. But um, allow me to try and answer this around three main things. And first, let us look at the web, the space, the internet, whatever old ones like me will call it. It's a very fluid system, but it's also, even to lay minds like mine, very segmented. And there are people who are accessing a certain part of the internet and using it as the way to get information. In fact, when you ask for information online, you are more likely to get the ones that have been hit on the most as the most relevant information. Now, what if these happen to be from other places? What if even though these are about Africa, they are not written by Africans and they do not do justice to our stories? I am sure that many times you have sat even by the television or the radio and heard a description or something being said about your country and you're very surprised because you live in it and you know that is not the complete story. It is important that we ensure that our story is told and well told. Now, one may ask, what is the role of policies, educational policies in ensuring that this happens? This is the year of education. We are highlighting education. We want to ensure that education information can be found online. When you ask for data on education in your country, do you get what you want very easily online? Is it verified? Who put it there? Was it put there by someone from your country or by the World Bank, by the, by the UN? It's very important that we scale up our people to be able to tell our story. And therefore the educational policies that a country like Ghana is seeking to put in is targeted at making this happen. And allow me to highlight two. Now to become a teacher in Ghana, you would have to pursue a degree course at the minimum. And with this course comes a whole new curriculum. And one of the key aspects of the curriculum is the use of the internet, the use of computers, becoming what we call computer literates. We are trying to ensure that every teacher is conversant with the computer and can use the internet to access resources to teach their students. Now, remember a teacher embedded in that name is the verb teach. Students learn, they study the teacher and what the teacher is teaching. And so we reckon that if we have teachers who are well-versed in using the internet and also contributing to information on it, then their students will also pick up these skills and it will encourage us to become a more internet and computer literate society. Now, in addition to this policy, there is the newly minted ICT in education policy. Now, the ICT in education policy seeks to look at the use of ICT technology in the classroom, but also the teaching of subjects such as coding, such as basic internet skills in schools to ensure that as a minimum, we can all participate well in this internet world, in this online world, where it seems everyone is migrating from the real world into. That has become our new universe, our new reality. Now, this policy came into effect in 2023, and we are working on its implementation. We are aware of bottlenecks, such as um, students not being able to use mobile phones in boarding schools and in secondary schools. These two places are where we will find most of our young people. And we most of us access the internet using the mobile phones. And so we are aware that it looks a bit defeatist. And we are still talking to the government, still talking to the authorities to begin to look at ways in which we can use the phones in school, but maybe 
use it in a way that will not impede teaching and learning. Now, the final point and the, around which I'd like to answer this question is the concepts that I think you've all heard about, education for sustainable development, ESD for short. Now, education for sustainable development is a big thing that we are pushing in the education sphere because the 17 SDGs can only be achieved if people know about it. So straight away, the role of education becomes very clear in it. If you take decent work, if you take gender equality, if you take zero hunger, no poverty, first, we have to know that this is a goal we are trying to attain. We have to know how to get there, what impedes it, and how to surmount these obstacles. And therefore, the role of education is key because first and foremost, it promotes information and knowledge about the SDGs itself. Then let us come to the skills that are required for these SDGs to work. And let me say the skill that is required for you young people to be able to do what you're doing, which is contributing to Wikipedia and allied projects. You need internet skills. And therefore, you need education. So education becomes another way that you can get these skills. Economic well-being, sustainable societies, everything that we want to put together to reach the SDGs can be done through the power of education. And so it is clear that education is very important. On this day of the launch of the African Wiki Challenge, I'd like to congratulate Ofua and all partners who have put this together. It is a laudable initiative and no wonder it keeps coming back year after year. I encourage all you here to put out the information, put out relevant information, put it out in the various languages, make it comfortable for people of all ages and orientations to be able to access your information. And together, let us make it an online space that Africans will be proud of. I thank you very much for your attention and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank Thank you, Amasewa. Even though we can't have a round of applause, I believe we can give reactions. So let me see your reactions. Wow, thank you, Confetti. <laughs> we have a heart, or oh, I have to see more. Thank you, thank you so much for the reactions. So our next speaker is Mr. Mohamed Yusif Maru. He is a prominent figure in the academic and educational landscape of Ghana. He's currently an engineer and a lecturer in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at the University of Mines and Technology, UMAT, in Takwa, Ghana. His role involves teaching, research, mentoring students in various aspects of computer science and engineering, which are critical for modern technological applications and advancements. With a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science, and a Master of Science in Information Technology from the same University of Mines and Technology, Takwa. He's interested in leveraging educational technology and digital tools to enhance learning and professional development. His work often intersects with initiatives aimed at improving STEM education and integrating innovative solutions into traditional teaching methods. His academic journey and professional interests align with the goals of fostering technological skills and knowledge among students, preparing them for the demands of the 21st century. Mr. Mohammed Yusuf Umaru, please, are you ready for us? Um, yes, thank you very much. I hope you can hear me. Yes, please. Hello. Hello, can you, can you hear me? Yes, please, we can hear you. All right, thank you very much. Um, actually, I spoke with um, Eugene. Um, I'm not in a really proper position. 
Today is Friday, so I was rushing to get home. Um, so, but I mean, I can do it without showing my face. Thank you very much. But um, and then thank you for the wonderful introduction that you were given. As you were saying, I was wondering, is that the same Omar Mohammed <laughs> that is in this meeting, or is another person, like a professor in my university, that you are trying to introduce? All right, but thank you for the kind words. Yes, and then thank you for inviting me to be part of such a wonderful mind shaping program that you've been organizing. This this year is my first to be part of this event, and I'm grateful for allowing me to be part. It is a great honor and privilege to be part of today's discussion on a theme that is both um, crucial and timely. As you can, you uh, as we all heard from our first speaker. She touched most of the list the key points that are really, you know, important. The theme of today is nurturing minds for 21st century in an era where knowledge is not just power, but in for growth and development stated. As we got here, we recognize the millennials and the pivotal role that platform Forms like Wikipedia is playing in shaping an informed and then empowered Africa. Um, if we can take a simple exercise, I, I, I want to believe all of us are having our um, uh, smartphones or maybe laptop and then connected to an internet. Is that so? Please, you can respond or even show by reaction. Are we connected? to the cyberspace. Yes, yes so please, please. Let, let's try to, you know, Google. You can Google Africa, Ghana, or even you can Google your tribe or <laughs> the, the community that you are staying and then see what Wikipedia will tell you. Let's try and check that part. Let's try to Google and then see what Wikipedia is saying. Uh -huh. So who wants to share what you are seeing? And then whether, um, I, I know you, you can't read all that is in the fact that are there, but if you glance through, you might be able to see some things that are true or not. Uh, who wants to share? what he has, you know, discovered there. After you Google. And someone shared. Okay, so as we are reading, I will come back to this. I will let you share what you've seen. After you Google. The main point, we will see that um, some of the information that are there were written by somebody who is not even us. And they are able to write the story as if, you know, they know the exact fact. Yes, most of them are able to do so, not out of ignorance, but out of research. Some of them do travel to our continent, try to gather information and then go and write about it. But they can't tell our story as we ourselves can see how the things, the, uh, how, how the story is. Uh -huh. So that's some of the reason why this competition that we are organizing this year is very relevant um, among our youth. African stands at the edge of transformation. So our rich cultural heritage combined with the youthful age of our population, positioning us uniquely to be a powerhouse of idea, creativity and solutions. However, realizing this potential requires a deliberate and strategic investment in nurturing the minds that will shape our tomorrow. So the key points I'm going to talk about today is what my um, senior madam, you know, discussed. The first one is the importance of preserving the African narrative in digital space like Wikipedia. Um, so for the point that I'm able to jot down, um, I'll be looking at the cultural heritage with presentation 
global understanding and then empowerment. So with the cultural heritage, as we know, digital preservation of African narratives ensures that um, the rich and then the diverse cultures and history of our Africa are accurately represented and then accessible worldwide. Um, somebody from Europe can just Google as I ask you to do right now, and then he'll be able to know Ghana and the type of people that we are, what we have, what is our natural resources, um, how did slavery occurred in Ghana? To be able to read everything, uh -huh. so it is important we ourselves to be able to, you know, um, we check what they put there and try to update it. And then uh, representation is the second point to be able to highlight the current underrepresentation of African content. As I was saying, some of the content that are out there are not really correct or accurate. So by um, empowering our youth and then and giving them that is in the uh, necessary tools that they need, we'll be able to you know correct some of these um, content that are on this digital platform like Wikipedia and others. And uh, we'll be able to correct the imbalances that are there. And then the third one is global understanding. Um, a well-rounded global narrative includes diverse pers and perspectives and Africa contributions are essential for comprehensive understanding of world history and culture. And then um, we'll be looking at empowerment, um, preserving African narratives and powers communities by validating their histories and then identities in the digital age. Um, so this is just to do with the importance of um, preserving the African narrative in the digital space, as I said. Actually, yes, yeah, some of us got the chance to you know, study outside there. And then um, most of them, when they see a black man, they want to just say that you are from Africa. Yes, we are from Africa. But as you know, I'm a Ghanaian. You are a Ghanaian. We are Africans, but we belong to a certain region. West Africa, but for them, they perceive us all as what? Africans as a what? A country. They take Africa to be a country. Um, I studied in Russia and, you know, most of the Russians, when they see you, they call you Afrikansky. When you say, oh, no, I'm from Ghana, you'll be thinking like Ghana is just uh, like a state in Africa country. So you can see this information, you will be wondering, where do they get their information from? So, I mean, by empowering our youth to be able to correct some of these things that are out there, so that when they want to um, know about us, they can go to the digital space and they'll be able to see the exact story of our continent. The importance of educating young minds in preserving African content on a digital space like Wikipedia, that's the second talking point. So under it too, I have some listed point that I will be discussing. The first one is um, youth engagement. Um, as you know, young people are the primary drivers of digital content creation. In recent um, age, almost everyone, you know, is attached to a what? A digital device, either smartphone or anything, even babies, you know. Now they don't like even the toys that you are giving them. They want to use what? A smartphone. Either you are giving them tablet that has some um, games or whatever that they are going to be playing with. So you can see the era that we are in. So it is necessary for us to empower our youth by training them, by teaching them, by giving them the right resources do, so that, and also nurturing their minds so that they can be using their skills, talents into the right direction, not just um, wasting a lot of time on the cyberspace. So we have to do education, educating them about the importance of preserving African content. Um, it can help us or lead them to a more balanced digital representation. And then skills development, teaching youth how to contribute to platforms like um, Wikipedia, develops critical skills such as research. So, I mean, these people that are our wonderful um, participants for this competition will learn some of these skills research, writing, digital literacy, and then critical thinking. Because um, I, as uh, mentioned by my honorable madam, she said, um, we have to check whatever we are writing so that we don't go and write things that are not really accurate. And then ownership. 
Um, so encouraging young Africans to participate in digital content creation fosters a sense of ownership and then pride in their cult cultural heritage. So you can see when we are able to do or write our own story, it gives, it, it gives us that kind of um, right. Other than allow somebody from Europe or America to come down to Africa, go to the villages, and they take the pictures that they want to take, like the village where they are so much deprived. Even in the cities, they want to go to the slums, where there are a lot of you know people living under a very poor condition. And then they will just, I mean, use that uh, information to write our story. Meanwhile, things have changed uh, at a very distant, higher extent. So they don't want to look at that one. When they say Africa, they want to affiliate it to that side of the story. But we can change that by writing our own story. Yes, we started from some point and then we've, we are able to get to this point where we are. So I think the kind of achievement improvement that Africa is able to make, we should be able to tell that story as well. We shouldn't just focus on slavery and all those you know, um, bad images that they've already painted us. And then future proofing is the last point and uh, uh, the second talking point. Um, so educating the next generation ensures that the efforts to preserve African content will continue and then we have to adapt and grow with technological advancement. So all the time there is what a very huge and vast development in terms of what technological advancement. So as technology is advancing, we also have to grow with that. So the last talking point is on the challenges in preserving African content on a digital space. So under this point also, I have some um, listed points that I will be discussing. The first one is access to resources. Um, and the second one is language barriers, verification and bias, awareness and training, and then systemic barriers. So let's touch the first one. Access to resources, um, so limited access to um, reliable internet and um, digital devices can hinder contribution from many parts. Again, Madame has touched that aspect that they are trying to see how they can bring in internet, especially within the senior high whereby they deprive them from using smartphones and the rest. So I'm sure the policy they are writing to, I mean, ensure that uh, certain rules are being what observed because you know in as much we are trying to empower our youth they to sometimes look at it in a different perspective they will end up abusing the right that we are trying to give them yes so they have to know that these resources are for learning and learning only once you are in the school boundary and then language barriers so the diversity of languages spoken across africa means that content must be translated and then created in what multiple languages to be inclusive. Even in this meeting, you can see uh, some of us can speak French, others can speak English, and um, the organizers are able to, you know, take care of that so that they can. There will be some translation going on. And then verification and bias. There can be difficulties in verifying um, sources and ensuring that neutrality of content, particularly when dealing with oral histories or less documented events. And as awareness and training, there is often a lack of awareness about the importance of digital preservation and insufficient training available for potential contribut contributors. So, and then the last one is systemic barriers, whereby structural issues such as the global North dominance in content creation can be what marginalized um, African voice. In conclusion, we encourage stakeholders, educators, um, policymakers, tech companies, and global community to invest in the digital education of African youth and the preservation of, as you can see the wiki um, organization is doing, we can support them and then um, empower and give them all the necessary um, support that
Um, hello. Mr. Omaru. Oh, it seems you've lost him. He's a few minutes while we try to reconnect. Hello, sorry, I've gotten interrupted by my network. No worries. I hope you can hear me now. Yes, please. Yeah, so those are some of the limitations I was saying already. Internet is an issue, even though now we are trying to improve. So I'm just concluding on the call that I am making on, um, on stakeholders, educators, policymakers, tech companies, and global communities to invest in the digital education of African youth and the preservation of African narrative. So the future vision should be um, a paint or a picture of a future where African stories, achievements, and history are fully integrated into the global, global digital history and reaching the world's collective knowledge and understanding, not only the previous one that they've written a uh, um, long time ago. You keep it there. Uh, when you Google Africa, you just be seeing slavery and the rest. Meanwhile, there are a lot of what, um, achievements that we can also share. So the future should be painted that way, not in the black and white that we used to see. So before I say thank you and then end, I want to know if someone wants to share what he has able to read on Wikipedia. Hello. Please raise up a hand if you'd like to share and we'll be on mute you. Okay, so we don't have to wait, waste a lot of time. I'm sure, I mean, uh, when we go home, we'll be able to check as we are participating. You don't just participate to write a story, but you have to check what is there and then try to compare with the actual story, whether that is the facts. If that is so, yes. If not, then you try to see how you can improve it so that you can write the exact thing. And then the outside world will be able to um, see Africa, not only of poverty and sickness, but also Africa where there is what a lot of prospects. And then go for development. And also, we are also trying to compete in the global world. So thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Yusuf Umaru. And I'd like to rehash what both our speakers have said. Even though this is a contest with a price tag, please don't just contribute anything just for the price. Make sure you are putting up factual information, factual contributions, and then promote Africa in the process. Thank you very much. So next up on our program, we have a YouTube video. We made a YouTube video for the launch of the 2024 edition. So Eugene will do us the honors and project the video for us. And also the link to the YouTube video will be shared in the chat. So look out for that. Yeah, Eugene, please. Welcome to the Africa Wiki Challenge, where we strive to bridge the content gap about Africa on Wikipedia. With over 4.8 million articles, only 2.69% represent African content, a disparity we aim to change. Did you know that African contributors make up only 1.91% of the active contributors on Wikipedia? This is why Open Foundation West Africa initiated the Africa Wiki Challenge, an annual competition dedicated to enhancing African content on Wikipedia. Over the past three years, the Africa Wiki Challenge has generated over 158,000 new articles and nearly 10,000 edits on existing articles. Countries across Africa and beyond have actively participated in this impactful initiative over the past three years. Get ready for the fourth edition of the Africa Wiki Challenge themed Educate Africa, Nurturing Minds for the 21st Century. Join us from the 25th of May to the 30th of June, 2024, in this educational journey. Explore topics like educational landmarks, programs, organizations, policies, academic institutions, scholarships, and more. 
contribute articles, translations, improvements, citations and photos to enrich African content on Wikipedia. Participation is open to everyone. Visit our event page for details and registration. Do not forget to follow us on all our social media platforms for regular updates. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, can we see a round of applause for the video? <laughs> a round of reactions, if I may say. Thank you, thank you, Eugene. So the team put together this video ourselves. We share the link in the chat. You can watch, you can share to other people to promote the publicity of the contest. And we have reached the point where we would officially launch the contest. We invite our executive director, Dale Sewa Barting, to have this contest launched. Hello again. Um, thank you so much, Ruth. Thank you, Amasewa. Thank you, Prof. With all that have been said today, um, I do not think that I need to speak more because our speakers have touched on every information we would want you to know. I believe that the key components of their speeches have been quality and not just quantity. And Ruth has reiterated that over and over and over. So for the last time, I will say again, that this year's content, due to the nature of the theme, education, which is very important, please and please again, make sure that we are putting out quality content and not just be interested in putting out more articles to win the prizes. So on this note, on behalf of the team at Open Foundation West Africa and the African Union, I declare Africa Wiki Challenge 2024 duly launched. Can I get some applause? <laughs> Yay! Over to you, Ruth. Okay, we have launched the contest. Get ready to bring in your contributions. And before we leave, Eugene would share with us shortly um, some information for participants, how to contribute, if you would like to be a participant, how to participate. And he would also leave us with closing remarks. Also, before we leave, everyone would turn on their video and then we would have some screenshots just to show representation. Yes, so Eugene, over to you. Thank you so much, Ruth. Thank you so much, Jayo. Thank you to our speakers, Amasewa. Thank you to Engineer Umar. And I'm very delighted that we've officially launched this um, campaign. Uh, the groundwork or the the road to launching this campaign has been you know, tough. And the team over here at Open Foundation West Africa, we, we put together the, um, the preparations towards the campaign. And I, I want to thank every single person who was on board for, towards the preparations um, of this campaign. Now, I know there are so many questions, especially for the newbies, on how exactly we can participate, how exactly you are going to win that 10,000 cities prize, right? So the very first step is to join our Meta page. So the link will be shared in the group real quick. Once you join the Meta page on the banner, you realize that there is the registration button there. So once you click the registration button, it automatically reports every single thing that you contribute on Wikipedia in the contest. So the contest officially starts tomorrow on the 25th of May and ends on the 30th of June. And I am particularly looking uh, forward to contributions from Ghanaians. I'm being biased here. I know it's an African Wiki Challenge, but I'm being biased here because we haven't had a Ghanaian winner in years. So I'm looking forward to contributions from Ghanaians, especially so that we can, you know, 
improve content about the, the educational sector and the educational sphere in Ghana and then Africa as a whole. So I would want to once again thank every single person that's made it over here. We have over 50 people here. And I know in Africa, it's, it's expensive to you know, and buy data and all that. So you being here uh, means a lot to us. Thank you for being here. And thank you in advance for participating in the contest. We are hoping to you know, break the internet with um, contributions about Africa, especially about the theme, educating um, um, Africa, you know, educating Africa for the 21st century minds and all that. So I'm just grateful once again. And to end it all, just like Ruth said, let's all put on our videos so we can take a screenshot. You ready? Let's all just put on our videos so we can take a screenshot. Okay, I see Juliana's videos. Great, Jaya, Ruth, Aram, Great, Benjamin. Oh, nice, nice. I'm seeing nice faces to the names. Oh, <laughs> nice. Okay, so let's wait for a few more people then we'll officially <laughs> take your screenshots. So our speakers, our speakers, Mother Mama Sewa, I want to see your face. Face out, anyone? Okay, I'm seeing more faces now. Great, so I think we can take a screenshot. Before we take the screenshots, let's all say wiki. 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 Okay, so let's take a second shot. Wiki once again, wiki. Great, 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 great. Thank you every single person for participating in this launch and we are much grateful. for. So to reach us, um, I'm going to share a flyer of our socials, just in case you want to reach anybody in the team, you could kindly do so. Yes, so on Facebook, we are Open Foundation West Africa, X, Instagram, TikTok, OFW Africa, LinkedIn, YouTube, Open Foundation West Africa. And if you would want to contact anybody at the, um, in the team, we would we'll leave our contacts um, over here in the chat. So I'm dropping mine now, my email, just so you can all get in touch on how exactly you can participate in the contest. So Sunny, Mike, Ruth, maybe Jaya, <laughs> drop their emails. Nice, nice. I see. I I see Juliana also dropping an email. Great. <laughs> okay. Great. 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 So just in case you would want to, you know, hear from us, um, and you would want to contact any of us, kindly just feel free to do so. We are going to end the um, session the same way we started. I'm going to play. The very song that um, Ruth, um, you know, started us with or, or ushered us with. The title of the song is Just Do It, right? We are just trying to tell you that just participate in the campaign. Just do it. So I'm going to share the screen now. Okay. In the meantime, in the chat, we can all just share our names and then the countries or communities we are from. Just so, you know, you might meet somebody in your country or your community that you never know. We can all share our names over right there. Yeah. Okay, so just do it. Here we go. Thank you so much, everyone, and it's been lovely. I've been lovely. Another six o'clock is here. Wake up and meet the morning, dear. Brand new day, it's a brand new slate Like Barack say, yes I can 
Don't let the worries of yesterday hold you down on this lovely day. Well, look up in the mirror and say, Yes, I can. Oh, burn your face, oh, burn your face. Na temwa we, na temwa we. Tani mukwala kabo. Magana mareke na blow. Na temwa we, na temwa we. Oh, burn your face, oh, burn your face. Magana mareke na blow. 